welcome. My name is Dr. Chris Williams, and I'm your host on Well Again. Well Again is your online health magazine program in which we look at fail proof principles for regaining health and retaining health. You're welcome. Today, we are talking about something that's quite important and that also escalated in occurrence uh, during the lockdown seasons that happened not too long before now okay you know and it's even still happening it's in, it's on the increase because of the scare of covid now we're talking about and about anxiety disorder and then we'll dare to look at the differences between anxiety and depression so i'd like to ask that if you are listening to this make sure to listen to our recording on overcoming depression okay it also will help you so you'll be able to tell which one exactly you are dealing with all right what is the uh, what is anxiety anxiety is a state of persistent worry or fear that interferes with normal living and activities a state of persistent worry and fear that is enough to interfere with your normal living and activities and then it lasts for a long time okay so the person is in a state of anxiety fear or worry or anxiety and then it interferes with their day day to day activities and it lasts for a long time sometimes uh, it lasts beyond two two weeks so if there's strong fear strong worry severe enough to interfere with daily living and lasting more than a week lasting more than 14 days we say that's an anxiety disorder okay actually what happens is that there is involuntary okay let me put it this way uh, there's a condition or a process in the body um uh, it's a normal physiological response when when you and i come up to a pressure or when we are when we need to perform or when we need to respond in other words when we are challenged when something comes up against us our body begin to um, go through a normal physiological process what's that normal physiological process uh, there's increase in adrenaline and then there's also increase in metabolism there's increase in metabolism of carbohydrate of fats of protein and then this will also lead to increase in our vital signs there's high respiratory uh, your respiratory rate which is supposed to be 20 per minute increases the pulse rate which is supposed to be between, be between 72 to 80 per minute it increases that's the heartbeat and then also the sweating the pupils will begin to uh, uh, dilate and all those kinds of things now those are the normal responses for instance if you have to write an exam or maybe there's a demand on you or maybe somebody is rushing at you with a knife or somebody wants to is trying to assault you all these things happen normally in your body now it's normal physiological response in medicine we call it fight or fright fight or fright response when you are frightened you respond like that when you need to fight you respond like that now imagine if all these things become the normal number of the not the the order of the day in other in other words what i'm saying is this when that when all these things happen normally when you are faced with a challenge okay but after the challenge has been overcome all these parameters go down the all the, this normal physiological response goes down it no longer happens However, in people who are anxious or who are suffering anxiety disorder, all these responses remain the order of the day. So there's perpetual, perpetually increased blood uh, um, uh, pulse rate, respiratory rate, bl uh, blood pressure, and then many other things that are supposed to happen only in the, in the face of an emergency. 
so that's what an anxiety disorder when all these things are happening perpetually and then it's over the two weeks we say the person is anxious now there are signs and symptoms to look at okay so after some time there's shortness of breath there's um, the person is afraid of space it, it, it may become afraid of uh, enclosed spaces which we call a uh, claustrophobia okay the, there may be dizziness there may be palpitation blood pressure may be up sweating even in the palm and in the places where they should not be sweating and all that don't forget we talked about increased pulse rate increased respiratory rate some persons pulse can become 90 others uh, their pulse uh, becomes like a 120 100 or something like that with other signs and symptoms there may be hot flushes the person will just have this um, uh, feeling of heat and sweating that comes upon them and then it can happen several times in a day sometimes it can also be feelings of chill all of a sudden there's no rain the weather didn't change the sun is up the person begins to catch cold okay another symptom may be trembling or numbness or tingly sensation especially in the extremities okay it may cause that so we talk about sweating there may be sweating nausea or feeling of unreality uh, um, um, happening to the person it may be accompanied with generalized body pain muscular twitching so the person's muscles will be twitching and all that it can also be accompanied with stiffness of the of the fingers and all that and then it can be accompanied with lack of sleep or inability to sleep so there's abnormal feeling of tension and irritability so abnormal feeling of restlessness abnormal feeling of restlessness it can also cause changes in menstrual cycles the person's um, menstruation either ceases or the person begins to bleed more than normal these and some other things are the signs and symptoms of anxiety disorder there are about three types of anxiety disorder there's one the severely acute one which we call panic attacks the person just literally goes into an hysteric uh, situation or a frenzy you know they are afraid for something that is not there actually uh, 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 these people will begin he begins to feel as if he's choking or he's having a heart attack or is about to have a stroke panic attacks it can happen several times in a day in some people's life and then it can happen once in a while maybe once in two weeks for some people okay so we are looking at types of anxiety disorder the first among them is the severely acute one which can, which we also call the panic attack or the hysteria attacks another one can be the chronic anxiety disorder there's a vague sense of anxiety much of the time chronic uneasiness easily startled there's headache they are not able to sleep well chronic fatigue okay so uh, anxiety disorder can be uh, or can be acute and then it can be chronic it can be acute it can be chronic now what are the triggers there are many things that can trigger uh, anxiety disorders and we're going to look at the causes but some of the things that can trigger it is stress okay hypo hypo uh, glycemia when somebody's blood sugar is down it can trigger it taking of caffeine based foods can trigger it and then taking of some foods also uh, not only caffeine foods can also trigger it now what happens the pathology the what is actually going wrong in an and in in somebody suffering anxiety disorder is that the brain receives the brain receives false emergency signals now when somebody is threatened or you are faced with an emergency your brain gives signal to your body that guy so there is work or there's an emergency we have to either take flight or we have to fight so all these parameters begin to raise in your body and your body responds normally however if somebody is having an anxiety disorder when there is no danger no emergency no call to fight no call to perform the person's body begins brain begins to give false emergency signals it's much like if um you just for instance if there's an alarm a fire alarm in a room or in a house 
and then you somebody uh, maliciously goes to break the alarm and turns off the alarm people will start running the altar scatter fire fire where is the fire and all that meanwhile it is a false alarm that's what happens in somebody suffering anxiety disorder their body is giving false danger alarms to their brain sorry is giving false danger alarms to their body so their body is is uh, responding in their last states all the time and it can be really tiring it can lead also to depression okay so brain receive false emergency emergency signals uh, and so there's hyperactivity hyperactivity of the body hyper performance uh, of the body uh, um, following hyperactivity in the brain this causes the pulse to go up the blood pressure to go up the breathing to go, go go up okay so that's the pathology what are the causes we have looked at some of the trigger stress certain foods hypoglycemia chromium deficiency can also cause it stress can cause it use of drugs or use of narcotics can cause it okay it can also be genetic and then unhealthy eating can cause it these are many more can cause anxiety disorders it's important now i just wanted to bring out the difference between depression and anxiety because depression and anxiety go hand in hand the uh, anxiety can lead to depression actually anxiety can lead to depression and if somebody is anxious after some time uh, they, if somebody is depressed they can after some time anxiety can enter into it and then so when you see many persons uh, as, that are that are suffering anxiety dis disorder you see that 50 percent of the cases the person also has bowels of um, depression all right okay and this makes it really very difficult to diagnose because there, there are supposed to be two extreme things two opposite things but they can exist in the same body but these are the things to watch out for if you are excessively worried excessive restlessness uh, trouble concentrating excessive worry excessive uh, restlessness and excessive fear you are just afraid you have not seen your child that went out 20 minutes ago you are afraid okay always afraid that that tells us that there's anxiety disorder okay uh, plain outright depression does not have excessive worry excessive fear and excessive restlessness and irritability plain outright depression doesn't have it now what depression uh, what is unique about depression the person is down their energy is down their drive is down their mood is down uh, and they are just worried they, they, they are just unhappy to death they are sorrowful to death but in anxiety there's worry there's fear there's panic there's hyster hysteria those the, these two things these are the few ways you can make a distinct uh, a distinction between two of them all right so they have many similarities many similarities changes in sleep pattern changes in appetite changes in libido fatigue difficulty concentration generalized body pain loss of libido um, considerable weight loss or weight gain all those are their similarities but the worry restlessness fear they are peculiar to the anxiety disorder it's so very important now um what do you do start with lifestyle and diet number one um, um diet dietary management remove foods that trigger anxiety okay now this Things are important, we, we know it and we accept them. Many of the foods I'm going to call now trigger anxiety. It may not trigger it the first time you are eating, but it does a build up and then it can trigger anxiety. Okay, smoking can trigger anxiety, alcohol can trigger it, narcotics, use of drugs can trigger it, use of, uh, abuse of stimulants like coffee can trigger it, eating and abuse of animal proteins can trigger it. And, and and you know trigger it so we say stay with fish scaly fishes and then eat it very little also the abuse of sugary things and carbonated drinks can trigger anxiety disorder now these particular foods can also trigger anxiety disorder eating of banana eating of plantain 
eating of avocado pears and eating of walnuts banana avocado pear plantain and uh, ban and plantain banana avocado pear and walnut these four foods i just called almonds also almonds also contain dopamine actually in the person who is suffering anxiety disorder there are two hormones the serotonin and there's dopamine in 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 depression serotonin is often lacking but in dopamine in anxiety dopamine is in excess these two hormones balance each other in the brain they are brain chemicals they are neurotransmitters serotonin dopamine and no adrenaline now uh, uh no adrenaline and dopamine make you hyper serotonin calms you down serotonin is the calming hormone now in anxiety disorder dopamine and no adrenaline are high okay and uh, that's so that's why banana plantain avocado and walnuts uh, are not uh, to be taken when somebody is battling strictly um, avocado, uh, uh, um, anxiety disorder. Now, so what? How should you eat? Eat green leafy vegetables, nuts, whole grain veg uh, veggies. Uh, increase eating of complex carbohydrates like uh, like uh, brown rice, like uh, or fada rice. You can eat it, okay? Or like the basmati rice, yam, potato. You can eat all this food. Eat legumes, beans. Beans is very good for you. And then still on that food, keep a food uh, chart, a dietary chart. Um, uh, observe foods that you eat that trigger anxiety. Uh, if you pay attention to the things you eat, for instance, you start feeling anxiety today, you didn't feel that like that yesterday. Look at the foods you have eaten in the last three, four, five days. They may be pointer to uh, what is triggering your anxiety. Now, other time, things to do with your food, Try eating small, frequent meals. Don't eat big foods at the same time. Try eating small, frequent meals. Okay, I would say don't eat more than two times a day or three times a day, but eat it very little each time. Okay, regular exercising helps. Regular exercising helps. Take about 8,000 steps a day. That's about, that's working of about, um, of about, um, one and a half hours okay you can divide it for five minutes in the morning for five minutes at night you can do it and you should the morning edition you can do between 8 and 9 a.m when the morning sun is coming bible says that healing it will arise unto them with healing in his wings the son of righteousness s-u-n will arise unto them with healing in his wings okay um what other things you do do in order to combat uh, anxiety disorder learn relaxation techniques there are several relaxation techniques learn to self-talk to yourself learn to tell yourself that there's no danger cool down and then one simple relaxation technique is taking in very deep breaths hold it for like a minute and then let it go and do it for like 10 minutes and do it sorry do it for like 10 times and 20 times and 30 times Okay, you can do 10 minutes stop, do 10 minutes stop, do 10 minutes stops. It helps you to, to literally let out steam. All right, very, very important. Adequate rest is so very important. Going on a vacation for professionals and career people, you know, going for very lengthy times without rest and vacation can position you for um, anxiety disorder. Get good sleep, at least between five to eight hours of productive sleep on a daily basis important try and be sleeping try and arrange your life so that between 10 a.m and at least 2 a.m 3 a.m you are sleeping if you don't get a sleep between 2 10 a p.m and 3 a.m in the morning um those are the five hours the five most productive hours of sleep in the day it's so important if you if you uh, try and endeavor and um, to be asleep between that time during that time, there are so many healing things that go on in our body. Some people do all night, all, all week, all day, all year, all month. That's not very good. That's not very good. We understand if you want to do all night for certain courses, you are, want to write an exam or you are waiting on God for a few few days. But the, the, the word of God says the night is for sleeping. The, 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 the night comment when no man shall walk. 
okay the the day is for walking the night is for sleeping uh, it's only us humans that abuse not sleeping at night we want to be awake 24 hours rats even flowers and plants if you go to if, to, if you see some flowers during the night you see them they have drooled they are sleeping rats roaches and all these things sleep and then we too you cannot cheat nature actually if you are not sleeping well you are positioning yourself either for anxiety disorder or depression disorder what are the other supplements that can help you cal mag calcium magazine magnesium sorry can help you um, um, vitamin b complex is very powerful in healing many conditions vitamin b complex and then you can add extra b6 and b12 and then b1 and b5 also you can add it ascorbic acid which is vitamin c is also very helpful vitamin e is helpful um, zinc is very helpful in, in battling battling um, anxiety disorder selenium is also very helpful okay and then uh, there's uh, a product of ours we call alkaline drop you just put a few drops into your water and you alkalize your water the more alkaline your body is the more you are able to dispel some of these sicknesses flying everywhere there's something called s adenosyl methionine sam e for short it's very treating it's very useful both in treating diabetes sorry depression and anxiety chromium is also very useful you know we said um hypo hypoglycemia can be a cause so chromium is also very useful l glutamine is useful l tyroxine is useful and l glycine is also useful fish oil is extremely useful in battling anxiety disorder gamma amino butyric acid gaba for short is also very useful and melatonin is you is useful in battling uh, uh, anxiety disorder now all these things are available they are available if you want them or you don't know where to get them from you can get them for a pharmacy but if you if you cannot get them you just tell us we'll be able to uh, get them across to you herbs also there are herbs that are that are natural herbs that can help your body to to battle away um, anxiety bilberry milk distill chamomile i talked about cover cover i talk about it a lot passion flowers call cap uh, um, fen uh, fennel fennel is very helpful in release in relieving anxiety okay st john's wort and valerian is also very useful in dealing with anxiety okay music also it, especially music that is that is uh, music can be accommodative music can help to calm you down okay if you choose the right source of music and lastly settle down and slow down settle down slow down when anxiety begins to knock on your door or depression begins to knock on your door if you are on the fast lane you need to settle down you need to settle down you, you cannot continue it means your body is telling you guys settle down and if you don't obey it you will soon break down that's what it means okay settle down slow down delegate more don't take on more okay you for 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 now uh, stay with the one that you are doing it's so very very important i said yes settle down settle down slow down slow down slow down and settle down physically slow down settle down psychologically and then your body will slow down physiologically if you slow down and settle down physically and psychologically your body will be able to slow down physiologically and you get yourself again do not forget we have not prescribed we have only given you as sources of information or uh, like i said earlier if you listen to this make sure you listen to our our production also on depression depression and anxiety are very much alike and then many times they are combined so if you listen to both you'll be able to understand it better okay and then um you may also have need of this our book reversing depression naturally it's a very very useful book reversing depression naturally and then there's also reversing hypertension and cardiovascular diseases naturally reversing hypertension and cardiovascular diseases naturally there's also reversing diabetes naturally reversing diabetes naturally it's also a very powerful book and then there's make your food your medicine how to make your food your medicine it's a very very useful book if you get it uh, we can send this stuff to you 
wherever you are in this country, we can send them to you. Lastly, I want to introduce to you sickness free, okay, fail proof protocol for regaining and retaining health. You can be sickness free if you say it out early and if you if you consult the right quarters, you can be sickness free. Don't just stay on drugs to control the thing. You can literally be anxiety free. You can break away from depression. You can be diabetes free. You can be hypertension free. You can overcome sickness and be free. You can be well rounded, healthy. Thank you so much for listening today. Do not forget to share. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to turn on your notification so that when we, we each day, the next time we upload a new video, you will know about it. Please help us share this so that uh, to as many people, groups, and friends that you belong, so that people, more and more people, will know that there is hope for them. There's hope for you. There's hope for me. Do not forget, slow down, settle down, enjoy where you are on the place to where you are going. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.